Most of the time, law cows and internet personalities in general do not get punished for their crimes, which honestly is a horrible ending to their lore. The first person that comes to mind for me when I think of people escaping punishment is Nova Online. The Nova haters have just struck on a full-on cyber war against the Nova stars. Those are clearly effing photoshopped. I will not stand for this, Nova Stars. Who, if you don't know, is a notorious pedo and TikToker who has yet to be punished for any of his crimes. Although there's plenty of evidence. But how often do you mask? Thankfully, not all these degenerate f go unpunished, and most of the time, their interactions with police make for some truly great content. To see them finally be shown what real life is like outside of the internet is just so satisfying. That's why I felt it necessary to dedicate an entire video to going over five of the most notorious lol cow arrests of all time. I hope you enjoy it. The first arrest I think we should look at happened back in 2021 with the notorious lol cow and Chris Chan, but has become pretty popular again recently since the body cam footage from the arrest was just released. Is there anybody else in the room? Wait, check the Spirit bell air dimensionally? You no. can't tangibly see them. Nothing. Chris Chan, what's up? See? Follow Yeah, those are trolls. They're following me from the internet. Do not let Chris was arrested August 1st, 2021 on incest charges that stemmed from a leaked Discord call where Chris was explaining how he had been having sexual relations with his dementia-ridden mother. Fast forward to now and we have the privilege of witnessing his interaction with police firsthand. As officers with the Henrico County Police Department cautiously approach the second floor hotel room, they prepare themselves in case a possible altercation waits for them behind the door. She's right here. Oh, gotta unlock it. Hello. Yes. Hi, what's your name? Uh, hi, I'm Christine Chandler. Okay, can you come out for a second? Uh, what's, what, what's the situation? What's that? You got a warrant for your arrest, all right? Uh, yep. Oh, 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 yep. oh, okay. You're I'm not gonna stop. Not You're fight. not gonna do that. Okay. Do not fight, you will get tased. The clip starts off with police knocking on the door to a motel room Chris was staying at. And just mere seconds into their conversation with Chris, he starts schizo mumbling and dropping small gems of his own lore. Oh. Yep. Oh, oh, yep. okay. Shortly after they got Chris in handcuffs, some unexpected guests began to form a crowd around the hotel room. Back outside, the situation appears to be escalating, and officers are caught in a dilemma about how to handle it. I kind of want to have you go up there and see what they're doing. Like, like it's not as an afford course. I mean, I would, I want to go address them, but at the same time, they can kind of do that, but they're not obstructing at this point. I'm listening to you. Everything remained fairly calm until the officers started to walk Chris down to their squad car. You don't have any of these people? I do not know those people. I... Okay. Yeah, those are trolls. They're following me from the internet. Do not report this. Chris, what's up? They don't. Follow her. Yeah, I think it's real. Oh my god, what is this? The most interesting part so far being Chris explaining his interdimensional husband. But once they left the hotel room, the trolls watching from afar began to move in for a closer look. Where'd you see him at? Regency. I'm going. I'm the blind. Yeah. I am the blind. I am good like this. And I am Chris Chassachi, your goddess blue heart. And I continue to stand strong and I maintain everything with quick bill and my side shoes and rose shoes and everybody. Once Chris realizes the onlookers are trolls, he gets very loud very fast. The officers responding to this call seemingly found this all very funny and even allowed Chris to conduct a small interview with one of the trolls. During this interview, he also encouraged one of the officers to frisk him, going on to say that felt good and sharing a laugh. Once the frisking had come to an end, Chris gave them one last bit of information about the impending dimensional merge and then he was on his way to jail. This whole interaction was honestly hilarious, from Chris telling them about as much blue heart goddess lore as he possibly could, to the police frisking Chris and interacting with trolls. It was just beautiful. Although nothing too crazy went down, it was also great to see Chris being given no special treatment. On his car ride to the jail, he would not shut up about his comic books and basically everything he's done online. When the officer said he hadn't heard of his stuff before, Chris seemed surprised and somewhat offended. Just like Cyrax, he assumes his name is known far and wide by regular people. In the end, he would spend about two years in jail before the incest charges against Chris were dropped due to a mental illness plea in court. Up next, we've got Daniel Larson, and if you know of Daniel, then I'm sure you know getting arrested and harassing police is not a rare occurrence. 
As of today, he's been arrested a total of seven times on charges ranging from petty theft to bomb threats, and we're gonna cover all of it. Daniel's first arrest came in November of 2017, when he assaulted his elderly wheelchair-bound mother. He would end up in jail for 45 days in total for this incident. So you are being charged with two counts of third-degree assault. So okay. both of those are misdemeanors. You're going to be booked in lodge at the Boulder County Jail. Um, and then they'll provide you with court here. Okay. So the summons is going to stay Monday at 1.30 because that's the day he will have it here. Right. Okay. Um, you are also being issued with an exclusion number three for the whole University of Colorado. So I'm being trespassed. Correct. So I'm going to read this to you, all right? Okay. The second run-in with the law has yet to be confirmed as an arrest, but Daniel certainly had some interactions with law enforcement during this period. Towards the end of 2020, Daniel's Pinterest account was leaked, and unsurprisingly, it contained pictures of little children, along with some stuff about the laws of consent in the United States. Because of this leaking, Daniel disappeared from the internet for around three months, and would later appear again in March of 2021, claiming the FBI had been investigating him. I don't even own Pinterest, I don't even have the app. So anybody that um, is saying that I do have Pinterest is a lie. I don't have Pinterest at all. That could be completely untrue because Daniel is a mentally unstable man. But it also could be true because as you'll see later in this segment, Daniel is no stranger to investigations with federal law enforcement. Shortly after Daniel's return to the internet on August 13th of 2021, he was arrested again, this time on destruction of property charges, stemming from an incident where he smashed the window of a parked car in someone's driveway. After being caught, he was summoned to appear in court and failed to do so, which resulted in around three $150 in fines. I'm not sure exactly if he's paid off the whole amount yet or not, but the last known figure was he still owed $250 to the courts. Less than three weeks after the arrest, the charges were dropped, and Daniel was off scot-free. Despite his seemingly good luck, Daniel was taken into custody again in May of 2022. This time, he was arrested on petty theft charges that presumably stemmed from a Dine and Dash incident he was involved in. Because if you didn't know, Daniel loves a good old Dine and Dash. Just one month later, in June of 2022, a brand new case was opened against Daniel, this time for criminal mischief. After he once again blew off going to court, a warrant for Daniel's arrest was opened and executed on October 16th. The arrest on October 16th was especially interesting because the only reason police showed up was due to a freakout Daniel had when he was kicked out of the place he was living. I am required to for my company and for my protection. Hey, hey, you can't do that, Daniel. You can't bust on... You terrifying him? And Listen to me. Stop interrupting you? me. It doesn't work. Like Listen to me. You it straight up. Work. Listen to me. Well, you straight up. You, you straight up, you straight up, listen to me. Stop. Stop. Hey, hey. You, listen to me. Hey. In response to being evicted, Daniel started smashing stuff up and the property owner called the police. So not only was he brought in on his old warrant, but a new case was filed that day too for destruction of property. I'm sure you could have expected this, but once Daniel bonded out, he would not show up to any of the hearings for this new case. And eventually it was just canceled in June of 2023. But before the police department even had time to cancel a past warrant, Daniel had racked up a few new cases in the meantime, starting on January 19th, 2023, when Daniel was arrested for another Dine and Dash incident, this time at a cheesecake factory. He was charged with defrauding an innkeeper and given a $950 fine for this crime. After this dine and dash, he actually seems to have taken a small break from being arrested. But that break ended on July 11th, with one of Daniel's most insane police interactions of all time. This whole ordeal stemmed from the fact that Daniel's pet dog, Zola, had been rescued from him against his will. So in response to his dog being taken away from him, due to the fact that he could not properly care for it, Daniel decided to enter a nearby Walmart and show everyone how angry he was. He did this by first destroying several stands of product, and then he attempted to steal a bus filled with senior citizens, going as far as smashing the bus window with the leash his beloved dog left behind. 
Just relax okay. for me, okay? I got my dog dog now. Huh? <laughs> and then I got attacked in the parking lot. <laughs> Alright, just relax. Just We're going to get figured out what's going on and then we can go from there. As you can see from this clip, once police arrived, Daniel was already being held on the ground by Walmart employees. He was arrested and taken away in police custody, but in the end, he wouldn't face any prison time for the outburst. Fast forward a few months and Daniel is once again arrested, this time because he missed another court date that was scheduled for the day before his arrest. But in typical fashion, he was bonded out within a few hours of the arrest and the case slowly disappeared. Finally, we're caught up to the current year 20. 2024, and it's been a fairly big year so far for Daniel in terms of police encounters. On February 3rd of this year, Daniel was arrested on charges of being a fugitive of justice, stemming from a case back in January of this year. This time, the outcome was different than usual, though. Instead of getting bailed out right away, they set his bond at $20,000, and Daniel ended up in jail for four weeks. Just 18 days after getting out of prison from the February 3rd arrest, Daniel was back in police custody. He was taken in on March 19th on fugitive from justice charges and his bond was set at $1,000. Just three days after this arrest, he was back on the streets with his probation terms back in effect. So once again, he got bonded out. Less than two weeks later, he was taken in on the same charges as last time for missing the court date for the previous case. But they decided to save the taxpayers some money and let Daniel out the next day on a $1,500 bond. The next time Daniel was arrested, the allegations were much more serious than petty theft and missing court appearances. This time, it was bomb threats. On May 1st of 2024, Daniel Larson was arrested on six counts of use or threatened use of explosive material and one count of interstate communications of threats. According to court documents, Daniel made threats of using explosive to destroy a local courthouse in Colorado, a nearby nonprofit center, the White House, a Colorado state government building, a college campus, and the FBI headquarters. I'm not surprised one bit that Daniel would make statements like this. We've seen how he acts when a dog gets taken away or his fake relationship with Grace is threatened. He has no problem jumping to the extremes, and it's so funny to watch. Despite the comedic glory of the situation for us viewers, it could be really bad for Daniel. If found guilty, he's looking at 65 years in prison and around one and a half million dollars in government fines. Around two weeks after he was taken into custody, Daniel asked the judge to be released on bond but was denied. And as you can see from this article, the judge said, Mr. Larson appears to have mental health issues. He's been been homeless for years and has been represented by counsel that he makes some money from his internet posting and may receive social security benefits. He is unemployed and has no stable place to live. As of today, Daniel is still in custody and according to some, he's still in federal custody. But others say the pacer.gov website shows Daniel has been institutionalized and deemed unfit to stand trial. I'm not sure how this will turn out for old Danny boy, but I think it's going to either be a very light sentence and he will be back to terrorizing the streets of Colorado. Colorado in a few months, or he will get locked away for years and years to come. Unlike our last person of interest, Josh Saunders, better known as King Cobra JFS, is not a career criminal, but he does have some pretty funny interactions with police. Before I go over any funny interactions Cobes has with police, I want to talk about the actual arrest we know about. It happened December 23rd, 2022, at a local gas station in Casper, Wyoming. He was arrested for public intoxication and they released him the following day. Unfortunately for us, there was no funny arrest footage of this incident. But if you know of Cobra at all, then the fact that he got arrested for public intoxication in general is pretty funny, especially when you know that it was most likely due to the fact that Cobra allegedly hopped out of his van to smoke a cigarette at the gas pump. So the police were called and they just happened to notice he was hammered. Cobra is constantly drunk on or off camera and this arrest proves it. Roughly one year after the arrest, the officer's statement was leaked onto the internet and a channel known as Boglum Chronicles made a video covering it. There were a lot of funny descriptions about Cobra from the officer, so I'm going to give you a small sample here. You should definitely watch the full video if you have the time. It's only three minutes long and I'll have a link in my description for it. Josh stated he does not have any desire to harm himself or anyone else several times. Josh admitted to drinking alcohol, but denied having made any suicidal or homicidal statements earlier in the day. I explained to Clinton Josh, I believed it was best for Josh that I transport him to the ARC so that he can detox from the alcohol he had consumed. 
Clint agreed to this plan. The next incident involving police and King Cobra JFS that I think we should look at happened August 23rd, 2019. On this fateful day in history, Cobra was swatted by a troll and quickly found out what real trained killers look like. <laughs> As you just saw, Josh was finishing his burger up when all of a sudden a loud bang at the door appeared. Immediately, it sounds like Josh got a bit scared and the officers must have noticed since they started comforting him the way they did. Now, I don't blame him at all for reacting that way. Most people would. But with Cobra, it's a bit different. Because like some other people on this list, he loves to play the bad boy character online. And he certainly didn't act that way in real life when the guns were pointed at him. Speaking of guns, that's actually what got Cobes in trouble with the cops in this next clip that happened in September of 2023. As you can see, the police came to his door and it really upset him. He would even begin screaming at his camera after the police left. Apparently a few minutes before he was waving around an old prop gun and the trolls called the police on him for it, saying he was unstable and waving a gun around. As you see in the clip, Cobra politely asked the officer to quote, leave him the f alone. And then he slammed the door in their face. Sake. I was not, oh my fucking god, I was not waving a gun around. Can you people leave me the fuck alone, please? It's fine, Jesus fucking Christ. I was not waving a fucking gun around, okay? I have a prop pistol I bought for Halloween last year and it was falling apart so I was trying to fix it on camera. I'm tired of the fucking cops being called on me! Bullshit! Josh is not a big fan of the police at all, and he's said it many times. Just a few days after this run-in with the police, they were sent to the Cobra residence once again, because a concerned viewer had seen Josh passing in and out of consciousness on his stream. I'm gonna play some of that clip for you now, and honestly, it's pretty funny. People are gonna keep knocking on my fucking door, Jesus Christ. Hold on, what are you up to? Nothing. Uh, you called it to confess that I didn't watch the video. No, I didn't pass on my live stream. I was ignoring people who were sending me DoorDash and me ignoring it not to give them a reaction. That's why they called it to confession. I'm oh, sorry, you gotta deal with that, dude. You're okay. Okay. Is that what you're That's fine. Thank you. As you just saw, Josh looked like he was on another planet in the beginning and could barely even recognize the knocks at his door as real. We also saw that once again, he's very hostile with the officers, even though they are only there because the man is drinking himself to death on camera. A few months later in December of 2023, King Cobra JFS was so drunk on his stream that he couldn't even stand up straight. He'd fallen over multiple times and his trolls used that to their advantage by calling the police for a wellness check several different times. The police apparently visited him two times this day, and we have his reaction to that all on camera. Once Josh hears the knocking and awakens from his drink-induced bog nap to answer the door, again, very short with the police, and rudely assures them he's okay. As you can see in this clip, when the police finally leave, Cobra stumbles around his living room yelling about how angry the trolls make him, and eventually lets out a big huff before ending the stream. 
The next re we're going to talk about is a familiar face to this channel and a very familiar face to the Akron Police Department. His name is Chance Wilkins, aka Cyrax. I touched briefly on Chance's police interactions, but now we can get into a few of my favorite Cyrax and police moments. In total, there are over 40 police reports associated with the name Chance Wilkins. In 2012, Cyrax was arrested for strangling his elderly grandmother, Sally. The crime itself is awful, but his reasoning made it even worse. According to Kiwi Farms, it's been revealed that Cyrax had asked Sally if he could go see a girl, and when she told him no, he went full force. Allegedly, he told police that he blacked out and didn't remember doing it. At the time, he was 22, but Sally can't stay mad at Chance. In the end, he was only sent to counseling for this incident. Although the majority of the service calls Akron PD receive are for petty incidents and don't result in arrest, Cyrax is sometimes able to make hilarious interactions out of these situations that should be boring and quick. Take this body cam clip, for example, from June 12, 2020. The police are called to Rax Manor because some random people showed up trying to take away their backyard fence. And while the officer is talking to Sally, he mentions that this only happens because of Chance's presence on the internet. In response to that, Chance lets the cop know how he really feels. Take a listen. You didn't ask why to take well, I knew why. Because these people are doing this. You wouldn't believe how many things that come up missing. It's Chance causes a lot of issues on the internet. Yeah, no, I understand that. Yes, you do. Hey, Mouse! I don't cause these issues. They do this to us. We've been here 113 times. I've seen your YouTube videos, yeah, man. Yeah, you don't know shit. And I've seen your videos. Chance! Go on, go upstairs. You guys are a fucking joke. You don't know what the hell I go through, man. You don't see the shit so. I do. Go upstairs! No, I'm tired of people thinking I'm a fucking joke. You clearly don't see what these people do to me. Okay. As you just heard, Cyrax, the bed bug pedo, told a law enforcement officer and functional member of society that he doesn't know shit. It doesn't get more ret than that, folks. Now, I say it doesn't get more ret than that, but it just might. A very common trend I've noticed in the life of Cyrax is the cops arriving at his house because he gets caught texting people, usually alleged minors, inappropriate pictures, and the people he's texting end up being trolls, and not the 15-year-old girl he thought he was texting. These types of calls specifically perfectly describe Cyrax as a person. He acts like he doesn't care, but eventually gets scared and runs for help when the bullies online start winning. So, Adrian, you mean Gothy? Gothy's been harassing you over the last two years? These people are actually planning on. I think it's the other way around. You're the one that's like making WWE style videos attacking Gothy getting me on some supposed pedo shit when I'm not. Okay. They're basically trying to set it up to make it look like I was doing rug rag. Rug rag, good time. But they're basically trying to set it up and make it look like I was doing certain things when I'm not. Okay. And I actually do have screenshots. Why, why, why is this always an issue? Like why, why are you always involved with people online? The clip you just watched came from the responding officer's body cam footage from February of 2022. Now listen to this clip where Cyrax describes a very similar situation to different officers in October of 2021. For the last seven years, he has literally been harassing me. I've tried blocking him. I've tried, I've filed many reports on him. You haven't past. done... Um, you haven't I've, done any of that, You know, bro. done everything I could to stop him. You keep coming and back. he literally is actually insane. He's saying, well, you know the old saying, drunk mind is a silver tongue. Okay. Well, he had basically told his friend, Manic, who is a friend of mine, that he owns me and this and that, and that if he can't have this, nobody can. He does I've own you, I reached out to several people. Are you streaming like a video game or something like that? I was. Okay. Like, it was like after I got off. These two incidents are not the only time something like this has happened, but the reactions of the officers in these clips were among my favorites. My point is, Cyrax, if you're seeing this, there is no way this type of thing keeps happening coincidentally, and one day you will be caught. The final Cyrax police incident I want to discuss happened on June 25th, 2023, just 13 days after the fence incident, and ended in an arrest. On this glorious day, a troll had appeared outside Chance's house, but remained on the sidewalk outside of their property. Despite this fact, Chance still chose to charge and hit the troll with a bat. Shoot. 
Hey, Michael. Yeah, just, no, 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 stop. No, stop. Stop with bombarding me with people to talk to. What is the 911? What, are, what, what is it? Eight motherfuckers just showed up in my house and tried to attack me and my family. Okay, well, why don't you call the police? We did. They're here right now. Well, what a, so but what? Dude, but dude, this has got to fucking stop. We got to do something to stop this. What? They showed up at her house and tried to attack me. How, how, did, how did they try to attack you? They wouldn't do it. And as I went to swing to get one of the guys off the property, right when he grabbed the bat, his feet was on the sidewalk where our property line ends. What, but, but you said you never hit him. Yeah, I didn't make contact, but what he did was he grabbed, like okay. he held his hand out to grab the bat. Okay. Shortly after the police are called and they take Chance away. But before that happened, we saw the true colors of Cyrax while he was being handcuffed. This clip is a bit longer, but is worth the watch. Just put the video on 2x speed if you don't want to listen to Chance beg and cry. Okay. I don't want to. Because this is what they're doing. We can't stop that. Though. Yes, you can. No, yes, you no, can. can. Stop. Chance, stop. Mom, please. Ed, go up there right now. Please show somebody to stop this. Nobody nobody's gonna stop it. They gotta take you no matter what. Anybody steps in, they're gonna take them too. I don't know where his shoes are. Yeah, where's your shoes at, Chance? Chance, where's your shoes? Chance, Chance, you don't want to go barefoot, I promise you that. I don't want to go barefoot. Take it from my slippers. No, Mom, please help me. Mom, I can't do anything, Chance. I've been telling you. <laughs> Sir, can you listen? Get can't these you. on your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there, the man child you just heard pleading for his mommy and declaring how scared he was, is the real Chance Wilkins. No matter how much he claims, the opposite is true. Even though it was great to see him finally be in handcuffs, he was bonded out the next day by Sally and lived happily ever after. Andrew Ditch is quite possibly the most frequent police caller I've ever seen in my life, and he's next on my list. I've made a video in the past about Andy's personal life, and it is absolutely disgusting. So if you haven't seen that, I strongly suggest watching it. I'll have a link to that in the description too. But outside of the depravity that is his everyday life, there are moments of content gold in his petty police calls. The first time Andy was arrested happened back in 2019, and was a really weird case. I spoke about this in my original Andy Ditch video, but I'll go over it again now. He was arrested on felony and misdemeanor charges, including attempted assault, aggravated criminal contempt, violating an order of protection, criminal tampering, and disobeying an order of protection, and had his bail set at $5,000. According to reports, Andy had been putting Epsom salts and laxative in the family's coffee and food for a little over one month, and they had started to feel the effects. They all had begun complaining of stomach pain, nausea, and were blowing up every bathroom in sight. Eventually, after receiving medical attention, detectives got involved, and they found evidence of the tampering. Despite the evidence against him, Andy would only spend one week behind bars before the charges against him were dropped. Just a few months later, in March of 2020, Andy Ditch was arrested on harassment charges after he refused to shut off his essential oils diffuser. And I would have turned it off. On, your mother is on oxygen and has been hospitalized several times due to breathing problems. Yeah. And she calls to complain because this aggravates her breathing And she problems. didn't even tell me to turn it off. Turn I was on the phone with great off. services. You know I'm asking you to shut it off. Get a court order, then I'll do it. No, I'm not getting a court order. I'm asking you to shut it off or I'll shut it off. Shut it off. Okay. And if you touch it, you you violate my private privacy. You're, you're, it's bothering your parents. This is their house. Despite the fact that it was causing his mother's breathing problems to be aggravated. In my previous Andy Ditch video, we focused on the first half of this clip. Now we're going to look at the second half. Once the phone call starts, you're going to hear the officer tell Andy to put his hands behind his back. Then Andy starts being difficult and saying, you're hurting me and I'm going to call my lawyer. Eventually, the officer just loses it on Andy and screams in his face. I'm calling my lawyer. Stand up and put your hands behind your back. I didn't do anything wrong. Stand up and put your hands behind your back. Stand up! Stand 
stand up. You're abusing me! Well, that's what happened. I don't want to die because you don't want to help me! Now that you've seen the clip firsthand, I'm sure you also recognize the greatness in it. I can't even begin to express the dopamine rush I got hearing Andy start bawling after being yelled at. It truly made my day. This next one isn't an arrest, but is still great in my opinion because it really shows the pettiness of Andy's entire household. Andy was in a room he wasn't supposed to be in, so his dad started blasting rock music really loud to make Andy have one of his fake autism freakouts. Okay, Andy, you need to go and get off my work, my out of my room because you're not welcome up here. I need to get away from you. It doesn't matter. You either go get away outside from here and call or you sit in the living room while we finish eating and then we'll be out of your way. We no, need to go. You say that every Andy, single night. Andy, follow we'll instructions. Until you uh, uh, come up. <laughs> As you just saw, his plan worked and Andy went downstairs to talk with police, who were there because according to Andy, he ate too many cinnamon rolls. He then went on to complain about how he was yelled at by his dad and even started claiming his father made suicidal statements. You just can't help but feel bad for the officers that have to deal with this shit day in and day out. It must be a living hell. There is no better representation of what I mean by a living hell than the next two clips I'm about to play for you. On January 26, 2022, Andy was being discharged from a local hospital but refused to be escorted out by the police. Instead, he was adamant about using some elevators that didn't even lead to the exits. I'm running away. You can't hold me hostage. Come on. You can't hold me hostage. We're not holding you hostage. Hold me hostage. We need you to go down to the You're ED. holding me hostage. Oh, you abuse me. Andy, you abuse me. Why are we doing this? You abuse me. Don't touch me. I don't want to be abused. So much so that he basically wrestled a police officer in the elevator. The clip you just saw is the beginning of the first part. It gets much worse. Shortly after the two officers that were escorting Andy out got him away from the wrong elevators, he began to get difficult again. As they were walking out, Andy went full schizo mode on the officers. He even started banging his head on a stretcher. I want to You can clearly hear Andy say they are holding him hostage, even though they are actively attempting to escort him out of the building. I'm honestly not even sure how long it actually took for these people to get him out of the building, because the stream ends with Andy just on the ground crying and moaning like a wounded orca. Watching these re all day really makes my brain melt. The next best representation of the living hell that these first responders go through with Andy comes in the form of a classic sibling fight. On April 29th of this year, Andy and his brother Joe were recorded on their ring cam having a vicious yelling match about Andy's diapers, and some tired cop had to sit through it all and mediate. Before I run this clip for you, let me just paint the picture one more time. Two men above the age of 35 are arguing about one of their diaper obsessions, and a tired cop who signed up to stop real crime has to sit there and declare a winner. He's refusing me my diapers. You guys don't want to take my disability and medical days seriously. I want my diapers. I saw him ripped up what diapers it's he had in the bathroom. It's not your and problem. I told him I don't want it. And I threw out my medication. I gave him the medication. It's, it's, it's Thank you. Joke. Thank you. I hate to break through their hands. Thank you. I'm not doing it. You can arrest me this time. I don't. I'm not going to arrest you. You can arrest me. I'm not giving in to that. Not There's tonight. What you heard was just a small sample of the full discussion between Andy and the officer that night. Punches were almost thrown and abuse allegations were thrown. I'll have the full clip linked in my sources on Twitter. The most recent arrest of Andy Ditch happened in July of this year, when Andy had an outburst at a local hospital, resulting in multiple officers having to pin him down. Apparently, he was at Metro Health and was awaiting care. While sitting in his bed, a police officer was informing his nurse about his medical history, when out of nowhere, something he said hit a nerve in Andy. Within 
seconds, Andy started throwing a huge tantrum, screaming, crying, and smashing his head off the floor and walls. Once they managed to subdue this massive man-child, he was arrested and charged with disrupting public service. Some people thought this may have been enough to get Andy committed permanently, but once again, he was bailed out within a few days, according to documents from the Poop Squatch 2.0 YouTube channel, which means he's back out on the streets, terrorizing the elderly, and soiling his diapers. If you want to see more Andy Ditch content, definitely check their channel out. I'll have it linked below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see my sources for this video, check out my Twitter, which is at RedmanSpeaksYT. I'll have all the links posted there. I love you. Have a good one. Peace.